Hey folks, Crusty Old Marine. I'm back with you to show you the completed reloading area, reloading room. And that is the official name of it now. It is no longer uh, to be called the bonus room. And I informed the colonel, my wife, and my daughter of that, that I'm going to be like all these other woke idiots and uh, have my own pronouns, uh, like Z and Zay and they and Shim. Um, so it's no longer the bonus room. It is the reloading room. But if you still call it the bonus room, I'm not going to get offended. You know, I have about a quarter to a third of it occupied by my reloading area. But uh, yeah, I'm happy as a pig in ship about uh, uh, the way everything turned out. So let me give you a little tour of it. So you can see how the table turned out. It is really nice with that T-Track system. I am thrilled. Um, got the T-Tracks from... Peachtree Woodworks in Peachtree City, Georgia, and got them on 8 inch centers. Uh, these are the heavy duty ones, they're uh, 5 eighths of an inch. Got them on 8 inch centers here, and <clears throat> 5, eighths in, 5 eighths inch sanded plywood in between. And I've got three coats of uh, polyurethane on this. It has put a really nice finish on it. Um, the wood and the, the surface of it is still not like rock hard. Uh, I've got some pitting from tools and work I've already been doing, but uh, you know, it's got a lot of spill resistance. So if I spill my coffee on it, I don't think it's going to soak in and the table's going to stay looking nicer for a lot longer. I've got my Forster coax um, reload. I've got my Forster coax reloading press. I really love this thing so far. And I love the way the T-Track system has come into play. I've got the uh, LVL. Uh, I've cleaned these up a little bit, sanded them, put urethane on those. But, you know, with this T-Track system, I can just, you know, take this thing in and out really quick, clean the table off, move it anywhere on the table that I want. And, uh, and it's rock solid. It's... Uh, It's not bolted to the wall, but man, that thing is, uh, it's in there like a rock. Moving a little further down, I've got the Forster Case and Cartridge Inspector, AKA um, Concentricity Tool. I've got the Lee Deluxe Perfect Powder Measure, and I've got the Real Avid Master Gun Vise. And they're all set up here with the T-Track system. Let me show you real quick how easy this thing comes in and out. So these are just little hold down clamps. And I can pop that right out. I can take that off. Set it down there. And then pull that over here. And that is off. And that area is clean. So I've got flags to decorate up the reloading room, man cave whatever you want to call it, bonus room. Uh, it look pretty damn good if you ask me. And we'll give a quick rundown on what each one of them is for. Over here I've got the Scottish Saltire or St. Andrew's Cross. That's the official flag of Scotland. It's been the Scottish flag since uh, I think 1545. And also over here, I've got the Rampant Lion, also known as the Royal uh, Standard or the Royal Banner of Scotland. It's been the symbol of monarchy and their agents since uh, 1222. And why do I have Scottish stuff up here anyway? I don't have any Scottish blood that I know of. My wife, the Colonel, is half Scottish and uh, competed in the Highland Games for 15 years. We, she's got family in Scotland. We've been to Scotland. and. You know, the Scottish, the Scots settled this area, Scots and Irish, uh, along with Cherokee Indians. And, uh, you know, Scots are just freedom loving, kind of badass people. So, uh, yeah, got a lot of Scott influence around here. Over here, over here, I've got the Gadsden Don't Tread on Me flag. Um, all these flags are, all these flags have, meaning to me in some shape, form, or fashion. 
Uh, they're a part of me. The Don't Tread on Me flag, Gadsden flag. Now it's a lot of people say, oh, it's racist or it's a symbol of domestic terrorism. No, it's not. It's a symbol of American freedom. In 1775, when the Second Continental Congress instituted a Continental Navy to go capture British ships that were supplying, uh, resupplying guns and gunpowder, they were going to go capture, so they needed a Navy. They put five companies of Marines on board those ships, and some of those Marines showed up with yellow drums with a rattlesnake and 13 rattles on them and the words don't tread on me and Christopher Gadsden decided, decided that is a great design for a patriotic flag so made a flag out of it so that flag has patriotic uh, symbolism nothing to do with domestic terrorism <clears throat> you know if they want to rewrite everything now and uh, who was it uh, the Nazi minister of propaganda said if you repeat a lie long enough, loud enough, and often enough, then, uh, you know, it becomes the truth. And I think that's what a lot of the uh, certain factions of our political system are trying to do these days. Anyway, uh, we'll move on to the next one. This is the flag of it's the seal of the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians, or the Cherokee Nation. I have, that's where all my Cherokee blood came from. Uh, we were all in the, in the East. Uh, none of my ancestors migrated to the west. We all stayed east and assimilated. I don't think that I have any members of my Cherokee blood that were onto the reservation or not really like assimilated, uh, you know, passed around 1800, 1850. And next up, and next up, I've got the Marine Corps flag. Uh, crusty old marine, duh, gotta have a Marine Corps flag. And then on the far right in the place of most prominence is the American flag because this is still the United States of America. Anyway, moving on, I've got a nice tool storage area right there. Also have a lot more tools over here in this uh, Black & Decker uh, toolbox. Get dies primers, uh, nice little cubby hole thing I built for uh, storing all that crap. Down here it's probably kind of hard to see. I've got an Armor All 2.5 horse shop vac. That thing is really nice. That thing's got a lot of power. Uh, it's small and it helps me keep the carpet up here clean and the all the gunk and uh, trimmings off of brass and everything out of the tracks of the workbench. It, uh, I got it off Amazon. It had like a four and a half or four point seven five star rating out of five, and I don't know, it was fifteen hundred to three thousand rating. So that thing has been really nice. I've got all my cleaning stuff down there. Uh, I've also got uh, way down there, way down there on the bottom. I've got an annealies uh, brass annealer. I do not anneal brass up here because. If I turn that thing over, uh, a fire in the bonus room would not be a good thing. So I take take that outside and do my annealing. Also down here, I've got this mover's blanket that I got. It's uh, it's three by five or four by six or something like that, but it's really nice. I can lay it right up here, have a padded area, not scratch up the work surface here, and lay a rifle on it, pistol, whatever, and you know have a soft place to clean it, work on it, whatever. Yeah, it slides around a little bit, but that thing was like 12 bucks. It was a nice little addition. Also down below, I've got uh, some cleaning stuff and the stuff I use for my wet tumbler. I've got extra parts for the T-Track system. I've got a Tipton gun vise under there. I've got uh, the Frankfurt Arsenal rotary tumbler, the dryer, and media separator down there so and I've still got room to store more more crap down there so lots of room that was a nice that was a nice addition it's the RCBS uh, micrometer and a micrometer stand um, you know if you're gonna have a micrometer the stand is it's almost a requirement it, it really makes using that thing a whole lot better. I've got a Lee safety powder scale. Um, 
over here. Over here, I've got the Black & Decker tool bin. Uh, all kind of reloading and scope mounting stuff in here. Tools. Bullet remover. Uh, trigger gauge. Three doors of crap in here. Uh, Hornady uh, vibratory trickler. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got a Frankfurt Arsenal and Teledropper electronic powder measure. Uh, we had the Lyman. Uh, that was not so great. Got rid of that. And I've yet to use that. <clears throat> Probably won't use it too long because shortly I'm going to be replacing it with an A&D FX120i scale and auto trickler, which uh, the scale is accurate to, uh, I think it's one thousandth of a grain. And the auto trickler is I think it's accurate to you plus or minus uh, a thousandth of a grain and it'll throw a load in like 10 seconds those two things pair up together so that's that's uh, gonna be an addition in the next six months or so uh, they're not exactly cheap over here I've gotten uh, got powder in the uh, little storage area I've got I got a little library up here of uh, reloading books and just stuff to write on. That whole thing is the E-Fine uh, four shelf shelving unit. It holds 150 pounds per shelf. Uh, I've got bullets and brass over there and uh, some loaded stuff too. Most of the loaded loaded rounds I'm keeping in boxes down in uh, this area right here. But uh, yeah, the thing has turned out really nice so far. And one thing I didn't talk about was that uh, fan. That fan is about 20, 25 years old. It says professional grade. Uh, I cleaned it up. It had been out in the garage. I used to use it uh, in the garage for working out until I got a much bigger fan that moves a lot more air. But that thing is really nice because it gets hot up here. And yeah, I can't use it when I'm doing any weighing or or throwing any powder or anything like that. But Man, that thing puts out some air. Watch this. I, don't, I can't even run it on anything higher than low because it just moves so much air. Hope you guys. So that's a quick little tour of the reloading area, reloading room. Hope you guys like it as well as I do. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll give somebody some ideas on creating their own. You know, for me, this, this is the perfect setup. And uh, I'm really excited. I get to be using it more and more and more uh, every day now. And like I said, I only have about a year of reloading experience, but uh, getting a whole lot more really fast. So, got a couple more videos coming for you guys. I'm going to do a review on this Forster case cartridge. Uh, inspector slash concentricity tool and got a video uh, going to do on uh, some brass brass prep uh, brass questions and brass uh, brass sorting and got a review video coming on the uh, Creedmoor uh, deluxe range cart so yeah stay tuned in and uh, see you next time